Okay, in this video we're going to revisit Chebyshev's theorem. Um, we discussed this in the first video as being a method for finding which proportion of data would fall within, uh, we'll, we'll call it k, but k standard deviations of some given mean mu. And the nice thing about Chebyshev's theorem, as we discussed, was the fact that, uh, you know, we, we spend a lot of the time trying to find what, what proportion or what, what percentage of the population lies within a certain interval of, of given data values in a distribution. Uh, but but uh, most of the time we end up discussing uh, you know standard normal distributions in it. several cases you might have a data set who you know who knows might not be normally distributed and therefore we can't necessarily use our, our standard normal distribution to find out you know what percentage of the population would lie within you know however many standard deviations of the mean so what we need to do instead is rely upon Chebyshev's theorem which which actually is valid for uh, any distribution okay so any distribution. Uh, we could use Chebyshev's theorem to, to help us find that out, okay? So, again, just kind of reviewing this, Chebyshev's theorem merely states that uh, for, for any distribution, if you wanted to find out what proportion of the data would, would fall within k standard deviations of the mean, uh, it would have to at least be equal to uh, 1 minus 1 over k squared, where, where k, again, recall that k is not allowed to be 1. If we allowed k to be 1 standard deviation away from the mean, it's not that, that, you know, there aren't data values that are within one standard deviation of the mean. It's just that it necessarily uh, does not satisfy, or it doesn't really pan out with this formula here, okay? So, so let's take a look at this. Um, now, in the last video, we, we actually used Chebyshev's theorem to find out what proportion of the data values fell within uh, a given set of data values. And in this one, we're actually going to look at it a little bit differently. What if, what if we had a situation in which we were already given the proportion of data values that fell within within, uh, you know, the, or a proportion of data values, you know, around the mean. And we wanted to find out what interval would necessarily satisfy that such that, that there was that proportion of data values around the mean. So in this instance, we're actually starting with a percentage of data values that, that surround our average. And, and so what we'll do is we'll look at a, a scenario here. And uh, maybe we talk about, uh, say, home values, okay? Let's imagine there's a neighborhood, and, and the average home value in the neighborhood is, is we'll call it $50,000, okay? So $50,000 is the average cost of a home in a neighborhood with a, a standard deviation of 10 grand. Now, I know this isn't uh, necessarily very realistic. I, I'm just thinking about my house payment now, but uh, anyways, let's say this is the case, okay? Uh, I think it would be valuable at first if, if we, uh, before we do this, we necessarily sketch a, a diagram of what it is we're considering here. And what we'll let this do is we'll let this be the uh, amount of the home. And we'll do in dollars, of course. And we'll, we'll say in the thousands. That way we save ourselves some trouble not having to write all those zeros. But we say, okay, so we say 50,000. 50,000 was the average home price with a standard deviation of 10. So we say 10 on top of 50 would put us at 60 is one standard deviation over two over would be 70 and then three over would be 80 and we can kind of stop from there but we say okay so so we say 40 40 30 and 20 and for the sake of this uh, here we can put in number of standard deviations below this here okay and then I think that's always helpful to kind of look at that but uh, but anyways let's let's get back to the situation at hand what if what if we actually wanted to find out um, you know, the price range. So we're looking for prices this time, not, not necessarily being given in an interval of prices and saying, hey, you know, so what percentage of the houses would be between these two prices? But instead saying, hey, you know what, 75% of the houses, you know, that will sell will fall within which range, okay? So we're necessarily looking within which dollar amount would 75% of the data necessarily lie. And so you've got to realize when we, when we take this into consideration here, we're really saying that we know we know that this value must have come out to be 75%. So within which k values would, would, would that be satisfied? So uh, I say k values because since we know that 75%, we'll write this, we'll say 0.75 is equal to 1 minus 1 over k squared. Since that expression itself um, correlates with the proportion of data values that fall within a certain number of standard deviations from the mean. But we say, okay, that, course, that corresponds with our 75% we're considering here. You know, what, what price range of houses would be within, you know, would, what, what price range would 75% of the houses that are going to sell be in? So know this. When we, when we figure this out, we are going to use this expression because these are necessarily equivalent, these two expressions in this instance. But uh, the fact of the matter is this. What we're solving for here is K. And again, K represents the number of standard deviations each way from the mean. And 
when we're looking for a dollar inter interval, excuse me, uh, K is very valuable here, but keep in mind K being the number of standard deviations is not a dollar amount. So we're going to have to, when we find K finally, we're going to have to convert it back into original X values. So I think it's, it's useful at this point to recall that since K is number of standard deviations away from the mean, and of course we've had experience with this as being a z-score with standard normal, we, we always said z was the original data minus the average all over standard deviation for a population here, but we could use the same reasoning for k in which k is equal to x minus mu all over sigma, and since, since we've, we're finding k values here and then actually wanting or desiring to go back to an x value, what we could do is we could necessarily solve for x in this formula right here, which yields this other identity here. We say x, whatever the x value was, was equal to now k times sigma, or k sigma. Of course, we've seen this as z sigma in the past. k sigma, and that'd be plus the average. And so we're going to come back, and we're going to rely upon this. But, but back to the task at hand. We say, OK, so if we know we want 75% of the, the homes that are going to sell, and we want the, the price range for that, what we'll do is we'll say, OK, so this 0.75 correlated to uh, 1 minus 1 over k squared, and we can solve for k. So starting with this, we're going we're gonna to kick 1 from both sides here, we'll kick that loose term, and we say, okay, so negative one over k squared would necessarily be 0.75 minus one, that's negative 0.25, or negative a fourth, and I say a fourth because fractions will be useful here in just a minute. Actually, let's write that, negative one fourth. We didn't have to do that, but we are living dangerously. And since these are both negative here, we're, we're gonna make these both positive, but uh, getting at k squared here, we, you know, we have two equal ratios, we could run a cross product, but I think it's more convenient actually to just, let's reciprocate both sides. So we'll We'll turn over both sides of this proportion, and it'll still be valid. So we say, okay, so k squared is equal to 4 over 1, or 4, and then solving this, we say, okay, so square root of k squared is equal to square root of 4, so this would necessarily imply that k is equal to plus or minus 2. All right. So here's what we just found, and of course, in the last video, we kind of, we said this is one of those values you just wanted to memorize, you know, within you know, what, what range of values is 75% of the data? Well, we say within two standard deviations, according to Chebyshev's theorem, is always 75% of the data. So, using this fact, we wanted a dollar amount, okay? So coming back up here, we say, okay, so if this distance here is necessarily uh, one standard deviation in the positive direction, if we went two standard deviations, okay, we would, uh, two standard deviations each way. So we have two standard deviations there, and I'll do the long way here. We have negative two standard deviations over here, but we'd say this range of values would be between here and necessarily here. Sorry to, to go over that, we don't need that right there. But we say, okay, so anywhere between $30,000 and $70,000, um, okay, that price range right there uh, would have to encompass 75% of the homes that are going to sell, okay. And so just know this, we could have done this with not 75% of the homes, but we could have made this, this percentage value anything. We could have said, you know, 0.87 or 87% of the homes within how many standard deviations would that lie? And it'd be the same process here. We just put that in here for this proportion of the data and, and solve for K. But once we have K again, well, remember we said we wanted to convert that to an X value. Looking at this, it was intuitively obvious that we were within two standard deviations in the mean, and that was $30,000 to $70,000 range. But let's say I needed to solve for x, okay, given a certain number of standard deviations. So we say, okay, so x would have to be equal. And again, I'm just borrowing from this identity here. We say x is equal to k sigma. So in this case, we say, okay, so two standard deviations over would be k. We'll go positive 2 in this instance. Times uh, sigma, which in this case was $10,000. Uh, plus the average, which was $50,000. And again, I'm doing this in thousands, but we say, okay, so x, x would be equal to positive 20 plus 50 here, and then we say x is 70, which again is our upper limit on our interval here. We say $70,000. And again, if we went back and did this with the negative 2 for our standard deviation, or negative 2 is our k, we say x equals negative 2 times 10, which was our standard deviation, plus the average, which was 50 or 50,000, and in this case we get x equals negative 20 plus 50, and there's our lower, lower bound on our interval here, 30k. So anyways, hopefully this video helps you. Enjoy.